very happy to see you again. In the morning, I talk to you about some of the important things to understand that we as human beings have a strange capacity, an unusual, unique capacity to find the truth within ourselves. We are a unique species in that way. We are not unique because we have a mind and a rational thinking. In fact, if we were to evaluate what we have, we have a dangerous equipment called the mind. It is dangerous because it is the first place where consciousness rests its interest. Consciousness wants to experience other than itself. It utilizes the human mind. And therefore, when it empowers the mind, the mind becomes an entity by itself. So it's not the power. It becomes an entity. And then functioning within that, it becomes very easy for the soul, the conscious power of life, to identify with the mind. And that's the biggest blunder we make. It's very easy to make the blunder. We very easily identify with the mind, so we become the mind. The mind is subject to the laws of time and space. In the laws of time and space come the law of cause and effect. If there was no time and space, there would be no cause and effect. Cause and effect arise from the creation of time and space. The mind utilizes it fully and creates cause and effect, which we Indian language call karma. Now it becomes karma, it becomes an international language. So everybody understands that the law of cause and effect created by placing experiences into time and space is the biggest trap. We forget who we are, identify with the mind, begin to feel that the one that thinks is the self. And from that we start the downward journey. After that, the mind employs the sensory system, the astral body. And because of the experiences coming from the astral body, embeds itself in it and makes the astral body ourselves. The two in combination then have frequent experiences of physical imprisonment in a physical body. And when they are a physical body, physical body is our reality in ourselves. We see a physical world around us only because we have a physical body. If you had a different body, you see a different world. It's so simple. That is why this trap of the mind, which creates all this problem, is so subtle that it's very difficult to get out of it. When we try to get out of the trap of the mind, having lost our own identity, having lost the knowledge that we are not the mind, but the power that makes the mind work, having lost that awareness, we start using the mind as ourself and the discovery of ourselves being confined to discovery of our mind. Thousands of people today, and I see them every day, thousands of people are trying to find the truth by mental process, by trying to speculate, contemplate, use all mental methods. That's all a game of the mind. And we stay within mental realms. All the three mental realms which we are experiencing, the physical, the astral, and the causal, are temporary and are traps. That's where consciousness is trapped. That's where we are trapped. Where our truth is trapped. Where our self is trapped. Therefore, it becomes so difficult to operate. Because so long as we think we are the mind, we will not be able to get out of this. I did a little exercise with you in the morning to try to show that you make the mind speak and you listen. It's an elementary exercise. Then you come to my meditation workshop. We will do meditation where you sit watching the mind. How can you watch something if it is not you? It has to be something separate. You can watch the mind thinking. You can watch the mind making up images and using words. Then you realize that you are not the mind. It's something separate we are using. It is like dependence on a computer and beginning to believe the computer is yourself. Whatever the programming the computer says, you start blindly following, which some people believe will happen. Somebody told me, in 20 years, the computer will become so intelligent. We'll have so much artificial intelligence from so many intelligent people gathered into it that we all listen to computers rather than listen to ourselves. I said, I'm not waiting 20 years. I'm seeing it happening today. <laughs> we are taking exactly that except it's not an external computer. It's an internal computer. The mind is a computer. It works like a computer. It's processing its input, output, exactly like a computer. 
the cell structure of the brain which it uses to exactly like a computer. One day the cell structure of the brain will be used as a computer. It's already happening right now. Therefore, we have to be very alert. If we want to follow the spiritual path, we have to be very alert. Who are we following? It's not a question of saying, am I following a qualified guru or not? Am I following good teachings or not? Am I following the wrong path or not? The most important thing, am I following my own mind or not? If you're following your mind, you're not following the right track. Follow yourself. Now, there is one beautiful aspect of the spiritual path which I'm going to reveal to you now. And that is the self, the true self, the true totality of consciousness has a power that resonates, power that's creative. It's not merely consciousness that becomes conscious, it's a consciousness that creates something to be conscious of. That creative power itself resonates and a little second of resonance creates millions and billions of years of existence at different levels. So that power, creative power, which resonates, creates all the experiences that are happening, leading to the experience of time and space through mind, leading to the experience of sensory perception, leading to our experience right here. This is one beautiful aspect of that power. As that power descends from immense power, even power is not the right word, the creativity is more than power. That creativity assumes the shape of the resonance. From resonance, it becomes like a music. From music, it becomes a sound. And it can be heard at all times, right from the top till now. That means we have inside us not only the ability to become unaware of one form and find another, we have the ability to catch something which is continuously connected with our true home, continuously connected without a break. And it can be recognized while we are here. It can be recognized because right now the self inside us, the soul inside, that resonates which looks like music, like a sound which can be heard by us, which we can hear as human beings. It's not a sound, it's a creative power, but it emanates from the self like it can be heard. So therefore, to make a shortcut of the spiritual path, these perfect living masters have advised, you can go long routes with the mental games, or you can catch on the eminence, the thing that is coming directly from the soul directly from the totality of consciousness and that can be heard while we are here even in the physical body. That sound, that something audible has been described by all perfect living masters in different forms. It's been called the ultimate sound, the shabd that creates the world. If you see the scriptures of different religions, you will find in Sri Guru Granth Sahib, the sixth scripture, it says clearly shabde dharti, shabde kaur, Shabde Shabad That Shabad was the creator of the sky and the earth, and Shabad was the creator of Shabad itself. And keep on describing in long verses how that power has created everything. In the Bible, in John's Gospel, opening verses say, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and nothing was made that was not made by Him. We're talking of the Word. Why word? Why not say power? Why equate a word with God? Because the word created the concept of God also, which we worship. It was prior to God. That Shabd, that word, the Rig Veda in the Hindus says, in the beginning was the Nar, the sound. All things were created by him, and that was the creator. It's almost a translation of John Gospel's first verses. How come? They are all using something, some language, some... Why word? Why not some other word? Because a word can be heard. Because the shabd can be heard. Sound can be heard. Audible things are which can be heard. That is why some have called it the audible life stream. Therefore, here is a shortcut. A route that you can... It's like a rope coming right from there. You can catch onto it and hold on and go all the way up. If you catch the sound of your own self. And where do you find it? You find it in the self. Where is the self? Where you feel it is. When you are awake, sitting like this, where do you feel it is the self? We did exercises just to say where it is. 
behind these eyes at the third eye center. Why do we call it third eye center? Because when we look with these two eyes at anything, these two eyes create two images and they merge, they're creating a sense of depth. Where do they merge? When we are looking at something, as we physical eyes, where are we looking from? If we were looking from the eyes, we would be seeing two images with two eyes. Why do we see one? Because the two images are different with the two eyes and they merge. Where do they merge? They merge inside, in the middle of the head, between the ears at the third eye center. It's a physical phenomenon. It's an anatomy. How the body works. That's the exact point. Where do you feel you are if you are not a body, but you feel you are a thinking person? Where do you think from? Third eye center. Where do you want to put your attention? Somebody is calling you. You turn around. Where do you look from? Third eye center. Therefore, in the wakeful state, we know where we are. If we are not matter, but spirit, we know where your spirit is. It's behind the eyes at the third eye center between the ears. And where these two eyes, their light meets. And can we see there long enough to see what's going on? Sure. That is meditation. True meditation is the ability to stay with your attention at the third eye center, not waver. There's something that makes us waver a lot. And what is that? The mind and its attachments. What do we, when we try to sit behind the eyes, what happens? We start thinking of all the things outside. Sometimes people say, I've lost my keys. I said, try to do meditation. The keys will come, but not sitting there. The mind will play games because it's attracted outside, it's attached to outside. So we are playing games with agency and computer of ours, and therefore the computer wins. Let us win by not listening to any thought, just concentrating our thought on what's going on here, if you do that, I can guarantee you'll hear the sound of your own self. The sound that comes from the soul. The sound that comes from consciousness and not from any of its cover. If you can listen to that sound, listen attentively, like I was telling you, listen attentively to the words of mantra that you repeat. I was emphasizing attentive listening, because listening is a capacity of the soul. Speaking or thinking is capacity of the mind. We are divided the function. Functions of mind and soul are very distinct. And I want to point this out because when I came first time to this country, I went to study at Harvard University, and people talk to me about spirituality. You know, they would say, it's mind, soul, whatever you call it. As if it's the same thing. You call it mind or you call it soul, same thing. They have no distinction. So the functions of the mind and the soul operating in the human body are quite different. The mind operates only in time and space, it thinks, rationalizes, comes to conclusions, employs logic, picks up sensory perception. All the function takes place in time and space. The soul gets intuitive knowledge, no space and time. Have the function of love, no space and time. Feel love for somebody instantly, with no space and time, no cause and effect. Have appreciation of beauty, no time and space. There are two functions going on in consciousness, in a human being. We employ the soul to have a feeling of love. We employ the soul to have the intuitive knowledge. We employ the soul to appreciate beauty. In fact, when we have one of these experiences of love, or beauty, or intuition, the mind comes into the way to create a doubt upon that experience. You suddenly feel love for somebody. What does the mind do? How can you be sure? He just puts it down. The mind comes in the way of these experiences which are spiritual. These are spiritual experiences. So that's why when you are able to become the listener, whether you are listening to the repetition of the words by your own mind or listening to the sound of your own emanation from the self, you are reaching closer and closer to the self. If you can listen intently to the sound of the self coming within ourselves, it will pull you. And it will pull you. The longer you can stay with it, the stronger you can hold it, the further you will go. It will take you right up to your true home totality consciousness. It's an unbroken link. All other levels of consciousness are broken. You go to sleep, you have a dream, you are cut off from the wakeful state. 
It is separate. You wake up, you withdraw from your body, go out of body to another experience, you are cut off from the physical experience. All other levels of consciousness are all separate, cut off. Sound is never cut off. The creative power of the self is continuous. Because the self is never cut off. The self remains the same no matter what you are, where you are, what experience you are having. Never changes. Everything else changes except the self. Did you go to sleep and have a dream? Who is dreaming? You walk in the dream, who is walking? You wake up, you know you are walking. You took that body, nobody else. You didn't see somebody walking, you were walking. Pahin, the Chinese philosopher, had a dream in which he felt he was a butterfly. And he flipped around his wings in a garden. The flowers were so beautiful, they emitted light. And he knew they are no ordinary flowers. They were so real. They were more real than any flower he had seen. He knew he had entered into a phase of real things beyond the physical reality. He was convinced that he was in a higher state of reality, higher state of consciousness. Every experience there was higher than this experience. Yet he was a butterfly. And he got back into the physical form. It was a dream. It looked like a dream. And he wondered to himself, am I really a butterfly? Or a philosopher Fahim? Am I Fahim who had a dream that he's a butterfly? Or am I a butterfly having a dream now that I am Fahim? He told his friends of this extraordinary dream. He said, I have such an extraordinary dream. I was a butterfly flying around and seeing those beautiful flowers and went from flower to flower. His friends joked at him, criticized him. What are you talking? You are a butterfly. You should not say you are a butterfly. You should say you saw a butterfly. He said, I never saw a butterfly. I was a butterfly. The self was a butterfly. You can change the self in thousands of forms. It will still be the same self. You can make yourself totally formless. It will still be the same self. The self never changes. And that sound, that shabd, called naam sometimes, called by different words, emanates come from that self. And that's why, if you follow that, you go to your true self shortest way. That is why in my young time, young ages, I experimented for so many kinds of yogas. I went to yogis, swamis, all kinds of anybody who say, here is the truth I can tell you I will follow it. Tried everything, converted to Islam, baptized, had dip, got all those experiences just to see where is the truth like. It's ultimately that I came to this, this path taught by this man which he called Sutta Shabd Yoga. Compared to other yogas, there were so many kinds of yoga, Art Yoga, Patanjali Yoga, Raj Yoga, all of them. But this Sutta Shabd Yoga, what does it mean? Sutta means attention. Shabd means the sound. Yoga means union with your highest self. If you can put your attention on what is coming from your soul, which appears to be like a sound in the physical plane, attach it. It will change its form. But it will always come from the self. The sound will keep on changing. Ultimately, there will be no sound. It will be yourself and the creative power itself. You will also find a very strange experience in deeper meditation. If you go deep into meditation, you will find that who you call the master, who you thought was a human being was a master, who had all the knowledge, who are giving you all the guidance, he was no more than a physical expression of your own shabd inside. It's a shabd that pulls you inside and the expression of it is outside. Why outside? Because we don't listen inside. Even when we are seekers. We are seekers, we seek outside. We are seekers of the truth. We are seekers of ourselves and we seek outside. Somebody says, it's not outside, everything is inside. We close our eyes, it's dark, let me open, at least I can see outside. How can anything be inside? It's so dark. So, we have to go beyond the darkness. Why is it dark when you close your eyes? Because you are not looking inside, you are looking outside. If you are looking outside, you put a block on your eyes, you can't see. It has to be dark. But when you look inside, it's not dark. You can sit in the darkest room with no lights at all. Bandage your eyes and think of this room and you are sitting in the center and you will see everything there. It's as simple as that. Check it out. The light is inside. If you can hold your attention, even for a short while, 
and the third eye center behind your eyes, you will see a light that you have never seen before. In the Bible it is said, if thine eye be single, the whole body shall be filled with light. It's not said, it's allegorically, it's true. You can see there's so much light inside. Unbelievable light, light that these eyes cannot even see, cannot stand. We can't stand the light of one solar sun outside. There is light of several suns put together, which you can see and not have to blink. So the inner eyes are very different. The eyes of the mind are bigger. The eyes of the soul are unlimited. And these can be experienced inside. So that is why I now bring you to this area where I will tell you tomorrow I will continue with a meditational technique so that you can catch yourself by the sound. Catch yourself by something that is held by the self at every level of consciousness. That is the fastest way to self-discovery and very practical. So that is the system which I have successfully followed and I recommend it. You can try all other forms of yoga. I have tried. I don't stop anybody from trying anything. The reason why I don't do so is because our mind accepts only certain things at certain time. We have to satisfy the mind. Especially when we have identified with it and we think that is the self. Then we have to satisfy the mind. Otherwise it keeps on asking questions. In religion, in religion we have a problem. They don't allow you to ask questions. They say believe it. But mind wants to ask questions. We all have questions. In spirituality, we encourage, satisfy your mind with all the questions, tire it out. When it has no question, then it look beyond it. So that is why you should not try to run away from questions. If the mind is questioning, find the answer. Otherwise, when you meditate, that question will haunt you. The mind will drag you again and again with the same question. That's why the great master said that you must ask all the questions and satisfy so that we can keep the mind out of the way. It comes in our way. So I will be taking you further on this trip to your own self, trip to the highest form of our own self, trip to reality, true reality. Tomorrow again, I am trying to end this little earlier so that I can give more time for the interviews. I hope you understand this. I would love to spend hours and hours with each one of you. If you ask me, what would I like to do? Meet each of you, hold your hand, and talk for hours, attend. I would be so happy. But the logistics of the physical world don't permit this. So that is why I will be having these interviews, and I am sorry, they will be short to accommodate more people. So there will be a little uh, timer kept. So please, when you meet me for a few minutes, if you have a number of questions, pick up the important ones. Because I have noticed sometimes in these interviews, that uh, somebody is talking of uh, some trivial things and time is up, so, but I have to still ask you the important one. So put the important one first. Thank you very much for very patient.